was supposed to die when he died. Right. Could it be possible that he died before time? Come on now. Oh, really? And if the answer is yes, what was the reason that made him die before time? Lack of wisdom. The book of Hosea says this way, my people have been destroyed for lack of knowledge. You can take that word right there, knowledge and put wisdom. We will die if we lack wisdom. We will be destroyed if we lack wisdom. We will be dismantled if we, we lack wisdom. We, we got to gain wisdom. In all of our gain, we must gain wisdom. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, now let's not be too quick and talk about Samson died. Because before he died, he went through hell. Yes. That's right. So some mistakes that we do, before we die, we're gonna go through some hell. And one thing that, I want you to listen to very carefully, very carefully. One of the very important things that the devil was so good and quick and he knew what he was doing to say something. He took them eyes up. Think about that for a minute. The Bible says if your eye is not good, your whole body is in darkness. When your body is in darkness, you cannot see where you're going. So the devil knew if I took these eyes out of Samson. I can just take the eyes out and take a vacation. Because he's not going to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be careful. How you apply wisdom. Don't leave and ignore wisdom. We got people who ignore wisdom. Yes. God blesses you with a lot of money. And you don't take wisdom from people that tell you be careful without money. God gives you a good wife. Come on. You become crazy. <laughs> God gives you a good husband. You become ignorant. God gives you a great ministry. And you don't work for the ministry. You come in the time you want to come. You give when you feel like giving. You fresh, you, 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 you look at your bills and see if the, them bills are paid and if they're not, then you're not giving. That is blindness. And then you don't know what you're doing. Say so. <laughs> but why be 
big mistakes of opening up his heart. He lost. know where he was going. I say this to say, not only for this ministry, but also for yourself. <coughs> in order for this ministry to be stronger, you have to be strong in your soul. <coughs> if you're weak at your home, you cannot be stronger here. And so you must exercise Greater faith. You must build your faith. You must work your faith at home. Not only you, but you have to do this to your children. The Bible says, and foolishness in the heart of a child is bound in the heart of a child. But time out will dry it out. back there. I call him my dad because he took care of me. My dad is back there. And uh, uh, in the middle, right there, uh, that is their, their son. It's the only son. Stand up, Fred. Stand up, Fred. <laughs> now, you forgive me, I was not trying to have you stand so people can just cut their hands. I just want to show people that this young man got a whoopie. <laughs> the parents took care of him and today he's the best son. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Let's be a little smart. Who bound that foolishness in the baby? Who did it? We cannot quickly say we have answers for that. So let's not be so much concerned about who bound that foolishness in the baby. All we got to do is to drive that foolishness out. Because if, if, if you don't build, if you don't foolishness out, what happens? It stays and it grows. And then 18 years old, you come to the pastor. I cannot stand this son. I cannot stand this dog. And you forgot that whatsoever a man sold. We forget that whatsoever a man sold, that shall he also bring. We must be able to build faith in us and in our children. Because if we have faith in us and have built faith in our children, the devil is going to have trouble and difficult trying to come into our house. Because we got every door locked. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And I don't want to make you get tired. Let me finish. They took his eyes out. He lost sight and could not see where he was going. And lost the purpose of his life in the world. Are we together? I said, are we together? He lost the purpose of his life in the world. We are not born to just come and live. We are born to come and do the will of the Father. We must be able to find out what it is that God wants us to do while we are alive. This ministry is not built only by past and face slaves. There has to be people who will be willing to serve 
of God without asking for a paycheck. Amen. And if at all a paycheck, you don't show up. You don't grab your gun and start want to kill everybody because the check is late. You don't want to start cursing people because your check was delayed. I'm talking from them people who work in the church now. If we truly want to serve God, if a, a paycheck does not, does not show up, we must be able to see faith come out of us. Because if we don't live by faith, but we live by paycheck, we don't want to cause trouble into the ministry. If we don't live by faith, but we live by check, we are going to cause some trouble in our marriages. The marriage is happy because we got money in our bank account. I want to encourage you, people of God, to love your ministry, to love this church, and to serve God through this ministry. When you're out there, talk to people, good stuff about this church. When you're out there, try every Sunday, invite somebody. May God continue to strengthen you. May God continue to give you strength and, and wipe the tears that is only you and your wife know. Because we uh, don't see every tear that come out. But Pastor, we need people who will feel the burn of the ministry. Yes. Who will desire to do more for God? Yes. Who will go out there and work for God? Hallelujah, somebody. I said, Hallelujah, somebody. We have to build this ministry. We are 12 years old now. We are going to a 13 year. We got to be able to do something that we could not do when we were less than 12 years old. Yes. Yes. Before I finish, Back in Tanzania, our neighbor just got saved. My dad brought him to Christ. And the wife became pregnant and they had a baby. And the baby, when he began to grow, was different. The head was growing bigger than any other part of the body. And that baby was not developing in the right way. And that, that woman would come over to our house. And we prayed and prayed and prayed. Uh -huh. But still, nothing happened. The baby continued to grow just the head. And now, at once, and finally, he died. That woman cried so much. Uh -huh. Son of 
without the pink. He's not wrong. Right? Come on. I want to encourage you to never take easy when it comes to your faith. The devil cannot run away from anything else but faith. Any place that faith is, fear disappears. Any place that faith is, the devil will excuse himself. Any place that faith is, the devil will make an order of it. Any place that faith is, demons will run away. Any place that faith is, the devil know that that's where God is. I want you to know, if you work for the faith, God is going to dwell in you. If you work for the faith, God is going to dwell in you. You will become stronger in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. I say hallelujah, somebody. Come on, put your hand together and bless God. He's worthy. He's awesome. He's amazing, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me finish. Let me finish by saying this. Now, you know, a preacher will say, finish. And we keep going. But I'm going to try. This was my finish number two, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> when the eaves of your future show up, it is faith that, that can hold you. When your wife dies, when your husband goes home, when your baby goes home, it is only faith that will take care of you. I am not promising that they are going to die. I'm just reminding you that it is power of life. When my wife was very young, her mom died. When she was 18 years old, when I met her, she was 18. Her dad 